The Viking Academy, baby, we're back. Weekend edition. Professor Stephen Williams speaking in the third person, one of my favorite pastimes. I got crazy Larry Perna. Two K's, two Z's, two Y's as well? Or is it one Y? One. One Y. Deadlift 666 pounds today. Satanic number, no correlation though. No. Just a coincidence. Now, I'm gonna teach you a, another cradle that I think you guys are really gonna vibe with. But before, I'm gonna get to it as quick as possible, by the way. But I'm bringing on somebody. I always bring on the best. As they know, I always bring on the best. I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna meander and bring on the average folk. As they say, I'm gonna bring on somebody have you ever heard the, the, the movie Deadpool? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? Think about it. Have you ever heard Ryan Reynolds? Have you ever heard, I forget, who else is in the movie? I know Ryan Reynolds is in the movie, and guess who, guess who worked as a casting agent? A casting director for it. Andrew. It's what you heard. It's what you hear. It's what you hear and listen. It's what you hear and listen. It's what you hear and listen. Are you seeing this right here? This is a casting director. This is phenomenal. We got BTS here. Shoot to Fred real quick. Fred's in the crib getting that BTS. All right, so check it out. I'm going to show you a cradle situation from side control that's phenomenal. So high percentage. So I'm going to have Andrew here on his back. Nice and tight. I have my side control position. Now I have to figure out a way on how to bait my partner, right? So this is an MMA connotation as well at the moment. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to extend my right leg. I'm going to start to throw punches here. Naturally, what does he do? He blocks me with his near side arm on the inside of my, my bicep. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to start to move my body up. And I'm going to push my chest right behind his elbow, pinning his arm into position. So what's great about this is I can now deliver, you know, re really ferocious ground pound. He has very limited defense to, to, to what I'm able to do here. All right, so let's just go over that again really quickly. I'm throwing my punches from side control. I have shoulder control. My hips are heavy. I run my hips up. I trap. From here, I go to my knees, just like this. And I want to keep his arm pinned high on his face, just like that. My left hand's going to go underneath. I lift the head. I go underneath the head. So now I have what we call double underhooks. Now what do I do? I start to feed his hand to my wrist. I, rather, I feed his wrist to my hand. And I start to pull him up to his side, driving my hips and chest forward. So this is where it gets funky. This is where the funk comes in. I'm going to go underneath, create a bit of space, and feed my right hand through to my left wrist. Crucial, right? Because now I have that Kimura chain connection that I've been through. A huge requirement if I'm going to control Andrew from this position. What I do now is I post my left leg, and I pull Andrew up to the seated position. Um, a lot of guys, wrestlers, would like to do sit-outs from here and try to escape their hips. Yeah, start to run his hips out, but I'm not going to let him. What should I do? I have to control Andrew's head. It's crucial that I control his head. If I can control his spine, I can control the trajectory of his hips. So I start to propel my body up. I put my chest heavy. Now, I'm going to do it uh, relatively heavy for just a second. So this is how it would look. See this? I'm going to lean my body weight on top of... Andrew's neck, so there's no way that he can, can move his hips out laterally. He's, he's trapped in position. By the way, quick caveat, I'm hitting him the whole time. With my free hand, I'm, 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 ro I'm rocking him on the side of his head. I'm hitting him through the holes. I'm finding the gaps. I'm working his hips. I'm, I'm hitting him nonstop. Check it out now. We're going to build. We're going to build. I'm going to go double underhooks. Small details, my knees are wide, my head's he my chest is heavy on his, on, his, on, his, on, his, on his back. Now look what I do. I bring one hand around the neck, I bring one hand around the knee, look familiar? Right? It's a very shallow, very shallow cradle. Now a lot of guys think they can escape their head, yeah, and start to t try to try to escape their head. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my left knee to the mat, watch my left elbow. My left elbow goes elbow deep, and my right elbow starts to sink in so I make a tight connection. Look at that. From here, all I have to do is extend my right leg and pull Andrew's body over my right calf. Oh, cradle fingers. Same. Same as this be. From here, I'll skip back to my knees. Right? And I have my chest. If his wrist presents itself, I'll grab it and I'll grab my own wrist. Very familiar, right? This is essentially the same exact cradle that we, we were just working on, but from a different angle, different position. Let's take a look at it again from side control. So I'm here in this top position. What am I doing? I'm extending my left arm back. I'm starting to throw those punches. He blocks the inside of my bicep. Run your hips. Run your hips. Run your hips. High in the elbow. Compress. Back to your knees. You're hitting him. Constantly hitting him. Underneath the head. I lift the head. I pop my arm underneath, and I lower my chest. Now my goal is, let's say his arm from the outside. More here. He's trying to block here. Push me away. I'm going to grab his wrist with the underhook side and feed it to my left hand. From this position, I pull my underhook out. 
I open and I slide my right hand through to my own wrist. Ready for this? I post my left leg, I pull Andrew up to a seated position, and I jump on his back. Wide knees, wide knees, chest right on the back of his head, and I'm just allowing my body to be dead weight. Dead weight here. Right, I'm hitting him, I'm constantly controlling him. Now I'm gonna go double underhooks. I'm gonna switch to the opposite side, go from my cradle, a very shallow cradle, here and here. I tighten it by dropping my left knee to the mat and cinching my left elbow tight on the knee. So here's the connection I want. Tight on the neck and tight on the knee. And I want to get as tight as I can. I want to go, you know, we can say more of a butterfly sort of a grip. Now in order to get the pin position, the trap position, I need to extend my right leg straight and pull Andrew's body over my leg. So I extend my leg straight and look how I pull him directly over my leg. That's what I want. And if I find the wrist, I'll take it. See? I'll take the wrist if I can find it. Right, I can run my hips away. Right, just like so. Get that good top position. If I want to come on top, which eventually in an MMA situation, I'm going to want to come on top. I start to work up, and I can do incredible damage from the top position with knees, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I kind of preface this when I was uh, working with uh, the greatest basketball player of all time. If he kicks his leg free, no problem. Kicks it free, I'll ride the hip, I'll go to my top gift wrap, right? If you kick your leg free, boom, I cover the hip, I go right to my top gift wrap. The back's there. If I want to take a knee on belly position, I can do that as well, and I can start delivering incredible damage. So, what are some of the key details we want to focus on? Let's do all this really quick. So, some of the details are chest pressed on the initial, the initial movement up towards Andrew's head. I want to make sure that my, my, my chest and my upper body is doing the work, not my arm. So if I try to pull Andrew's arm here, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough competitive battle because we're relatively the same size, right? We can assume that, especially if the MMA fight, it's the same weight class. So I'm going to start to use my hip and my chest to actually assist me in getting this arm to a more squared position. This is crucial. And again, you're always peppering him up. You're always landing shots on him. I come to my knees, I lift his head, I grab the wrist, just as this. So I was able to lock his wrist there, so more subtlety. So I can use my right hand to feed Andrew's near side arm to my, my left hand, All right? That's crucial. Now from this position, what I want to do is I want to be able, I want to prop Andrew up, so I have to create space, work my hand through by giving up my far side underhook and working my arm all the way through that gap. Close the left leg for leverage, pull your partner up, and you get to that toddler position where you're holding him like a baby in position. And I'm able to hit him and control him from here. Hit him and control him. Right, really, really simple, okay? I'm gonna go double underhooks. Why I like to go double underhook is now I have knee prize. Now we're gonna get into a bigger series where we start to actually drive the knee into the hip and look for our wrist rise on this side. Like more sophisticated, very painful stuff. But for now, for now, we have a cradle. But we have to go double underhooks first because he may try to turn side to side. So we gotta go, we gotta go to that position. So we go over the shoulder. When I'm ready to attack the cradle, I go over the shoulder. I tighten up. I run my chain. Here and here, I straighten my leg, pull my partner over the top, just like that. Okay. If I can find the wrist, I'll take it. I'll grab the wrist, grab my own wrist, and start to run my hips away, away, away. He's pinned in the, in the wrestling match, he's be back points of pin. Or I can get up to my knees in a real fight, street fight, or MMA competition. And I can knee him in his kidneys a few times illegally, then I can also smash my knee into his ribs. I can also uh, uh, just let go of my left arm and work damaging ground and pound. So let's do it a few times in, in you know, somewhat of a fast motion. Greatest gym of all time, Deadpool casting director, Andrew, killing the game constantly. We have Larry Perrin, the greatest striking coach in all of the world. Incredible. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. More videos coming every single day.